So anyone remember when the Steelers schedule was the boogeyman in everybody's life this summer? Good afternoon to you. Good Thursday afternoon. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is the new Double Shot Show. It comes your way at 4 p.m. Eastern every weekday. The Steelers currently are 5-2. and two. If things go the way they should, I can say that. They can't. They'll be 6-2 and two heading into the bye. My first thought upon looking at the first half of this schedule, in all honesty, and I'm talking about back when it came out, was, man, they'd better go 6-2 and two in that first half. I swear to you, I swear to you, they'd better go 6-2. and two. And here they are in a position to do exactly that. Now, I'm not going to lie here or pretend I saw any of the rest of this coming, but I'm comfortable admitting to you that I, you know, I, I thought the same thing pretty much everybody else did. It's not just the caliber of the opponents that the Steelers are facing in a second half. It's some of the crunching of the days and Chiefs on a Christmas day on Wednesday in the afternoon over across the river. There's a Saturday game in there. There's a couple of Thursdays. There's a bunch of night games. Heck, there might be more night games by the time the league is done flexing. And it it's going to be a grind. I'm not going to pretend otherwise, and they absolutely shouldn't. But let's get real here. Let's get real. This second half of the schedule opens up with a surprising Washington team. And that's the opposite of what everybody saw coming. And then it continues with one, two, three, four games inside the AFC North. Baltimore, at Cleveland, at Cincinnati, and then the Browns back here. Are we still worried about the two Ohio teams? Or even one of them? You see where I'm getting at here? It, it, Ravens, you can always take them and just kind of set them off to the side when analyzing anything. Because no matter where they or the Steelers are, games are going to be separated by three points. Somebody's going to kick a field goal in the final second to win it. And it's just going to come down to whoever happened to have the better fourth quarter. Those are, th those are just out there. At Philadelphia, tough. At Baltimore, tough. The Chiefs, I already mentioned on Christmas Day here, tough. And then finishing up with the Bengals here. But is it scary? Is it the end of everything for this team? When you see how the Steelers are getting better week to week, it's not always in a straight line. It's not, uh, as the analysts say, it's not linear. Progress isn't linear is the phrase that they use. You're going to have bumps. You're going to have setbacks. You're going to have the Indianapolis game that the Steelers had. You're going to have that, ugh, that game against the Cowboys here. But you're also going to have, if things go the way they should, an offense that's kind of finding itself a little bit more with each passing week. Maybe an offensive line specifically within that. I know we all talk about the quarterback, but you know Arthur Smith brought it up in his press conference today. These guys are starting to do specific things, even while they're still changing people and moving parts. And Ryan Col McCollum is your center for a couple of weeks. They're starting to get a little bit smarter, a little bit more meticulous about where they need to be and how. That always happens with a line. It always takes four to six weeks, even with the most experienced guys. You're starting to see it a little bit. Defensively, yeah, I mean, you can look at where they rank. You can look at all their takeaways and everything else. But is there another level to that, too? Sure there is. Don't make me bring up Minka Fitzpatrick every time because it's not just him. It's not just him. They can become better overall at pretty much everything except, of course, special teams. They just can't get any better at special teams than what they've been. At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. Joined now by Chris Halleck over on the south side 
coming out of the Steelers headquarters after practice today. Chris, have you ever seen the special teams guys walking around with their chins held this high? I can't help but notice that in there these days. It's just they're they're like, yeah, I'm part of this team. Look at I, me. I, I'm on special teams. It's really, really interesting because I remember one of the storylines coming out of the preseason. We were actually talking about gunners, like not gunner. Not gu- not Gunnar Olszewski. Yes. Yes. Not not that guy. Not, not that Gunnar guy. Olszewski. But we were talking about Gunners, you know, the guys who run down the field to try to cuz we're talking about like man, this special team is might be like they they don't have a gunner, they they need something and then here we are. It's, you know, they're about to play their their uh eighth game of the season and they've blocked three kicks now, two two field goal attempts. Yep. Yeah, two field one punt, and by the way, we can throw in there since <laughs> New York apparently agrees. Minka Fitzpatrick had a blocked field goal too. And while we're at it, Miles Killebrew yeah. got this close to blocking that punt. You know, the one where he kind of mm-hmm. hurt himself a little bit with the dive, like this. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, you don't see teams do that in a full season. You don't sometimes see teams yeah, do that. Th- over th- two this is a seasons. this is a very special special teams unit. Like it, it just it just is, and and. I I, remember, I just I know that whenever we do our live files on DK Pittsburgh Sports during during games, we will get a lot of compl- like anytime there's any kind of hole in the special teams and anything, just the reaction is oh yeah, fire yeah. Danny Smith like like it's just, it's just fire Danny Smith fire Danny Smith. Well, it, 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 for for full context here, mm-hmm. early on this season, the yes. special teams mm-hmm. had too many penalties. Okay, I think we can agree on that. That it happened in Atlanta. It happened back home when they came back for the home opener, uh, mm-hmm. and that got cleaned up. That's to Danny Smith's credit. The field goals and the punts. I mean, yeah, you can say that's to Danny Smith's credit, but really, it's about Chris Boswell, and now it's about Corliss Waitman. Godsend, brilliant I mean, yeah. replacement. Yeah, for Cameron Johnston, that looked that injury looked like it was going to be to, to Johnston looked like it yeah, was going to really be a backbreaker. Uh, I heard I heard Danny in the locker room, Danny Smith, uh, joking around. That was Atlanta. That was the first game of the season on the road. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. He's joking around in the locker room, not not at Johnston's expense, obviously, but joking around. <laughs> hey, anybody here know how to punt? I got to find a punter. I got to yeah. find a punter. You can hear him saying that, right? Well, they sure found a punter, and yet you don't give Danny that much credit for that but let me throw this statistic out for you returners against the Steelers kick coverage teams have returned the football only 10 times which by the way is a really low number that's to Boz's credit for a total of 33 yards I'm gonna I'm gonna read this again there have been 10 returns against the Steelers for 33 yards okay that's insane. The Steelers have. Uh, um, I'm looking at this graphic here that's in front of me. The Steelers are so far and away better than everybody else on special teams right now that it isn't even close. There isn't the Broncos are second, and they're like a mile behind. That's what's happened here. Uh, Danny Smith, I don't think, can get enough credit. And we're not just saying that because because me and Chris love the guy, okay? And he is, who he is. <laughs> yeah. full disclosure here, right? But he and his special teams have made such a significant difference for the Steelers this year that I think it's difficult to quantify maybe outside of field position. And the Steelers are one of the better field positions, starting point on the field yeah, in this, the National Football It really League. has been a very, very I – mean, when, when Mike Tomlin talks about all three phases, this really is a team that is benefiting from all three phases because just when the offense isn't getting things going, you can rely on Corliss Waitman to – Boom! The ball to the other side of the field, and then yeah, yeah, right. Wherever he wants, and, by the and, way. You know, then all yeah. of a sudden, uh, just like the offense is getting things, or defense is getting things going, then all of a sudden, special teams can come in with a splash play. You know, Jer- uh, Jeremiah Moon comes in with that blocked punt in in Vegas, and all of a sudden, the game is turned on its head. And from that point on, it's just all Steelers at that point. Uh, special teams will do that for you, like blocked field goals, blocked extra points. Those those are those are it's it's one of those intangible things about, about football. We always want to talk about analytics and data and everything like that. Intangibles absolutely matter, and those plays on special teams absolutely provide momentum boosts. Oh, it's it's different. It's a yeah. it's a different energy. I mean, if you if if you were in Acrisure Stadium Sunday night when that blocked kick happened, listen, it's it's, it's yeah. one point. 
right? It's a yes. one, it's a one point difference. Mm -hmm. Place erupted more yeah. than it did for a touchdown. Because why? Because something happened that you didn't expect. And guys who are not part of a lot of them aren't part of the regular offense or the regular defense, and they're out there celebrating like it's you know overtime of the Super Bowl. That's just a different vibe. But back to the thing that yeah. I, I brought up with you at the very beginning. When I'm talking to these guys now, and they're standing right next to a, I don't know, a TJ Watt or a Patrick Queen or somebody, they're not, you know, the way, you know what I'm talking about here, Chris, with special teams guys, they kind of keep to themselves, <laughs> they're in their stalls, and they're, they're, they're seen, not heard, and really not even seen, and now they're just like, here's yeah. Rodney Williams, everybody. You know, casual fan. Who, what's a Rodney Williams? Us. Yeah. Hey, man, there's Rodney Williams, right? And it, I think it just builds a tighter bond in, in general. It used to be just TJ who would say offense, defense, special teams, offense, defense, special teams. Now it's everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Now and the one everybody. thing that I think that they've done a really th – that really kind of shows how special this group is, is they lost Ben Skoranek, who was brought in essentially to be that gunner that they were missing. He's out with an injury. Tyler Matikiewicz, who was probably going to be outside of Miles Killebrew, their best special teams player, he went down with an injury early. And just today, he got re he returned to practice, and now his 21-day window is open. So you're just yes. like, wow, now they can get another boost if Matikiewicz comes back. And But but they like they had players go down. And you, I mean, we talked about it already. Cameron Johnston, one of the best punters in the league, goes down. They've continued chugging along. And Cam Hayward spoke this morning about just how special Dane Smith is and how he's gone about his not just about the way he attacks chewing gum, but the way that he attacks coaching. And I thought I thought what Cam said about him in general was just really really good. And here is what Cam said: He likes his bubble gum. Mm -hmm. um, he is a guy who brings a lot of energy to the group, um, and he doesn't settle for anything. Uh, I think. Uh, year in and year out, uh, every meeting he's a part of, everybody knows he's a part of that meeting. He is locked in. Um, and then I can't speak enough to his film work. Uh, he's always uh, looking at film uh, from other teams, you know, weeks into the season um, or years behind. You know, he's always looking for that edge. Uh, and he's making sure we're accountable in our mistakes, but then making sure we can take advantage of that as well. What's his favorite brand of gum? Do you know? Um, was it Double Bubble or like the original? Like the stuff that lasts like five minutes. I, I don't know how he does it, but uh, he goes through a bunch. If you think Chris and I love Danny Smith, you should see everybody else in there. Uh, you got to see the celebration that they had after uh, after Drew La or Dean Lowry. Yeah. Lowry. Dean yeah. Lowry's block the other day. Yeah. And, and Dean Lowry told me after the game, he said, his, that's, it was all about Coach Smith. We, we just wanted to do that for him. He would push in the blocks all week long. I saw a little bit of an opening, went after it and got it. We're proud of that. That's great stuff. One other thing I want to bring up here, Chris, you mentioned, uh, you know, Matikiewicz and uh, Scouring going down. Don't forget that one of the more curious moves of the offseason was that they didn't mm -hmm. bring Miles Boykin back. And remember, that was the reason that we were all talking about the gunner. Who's going to replace? Yep. Because Boykin was really good at this. Guess what? It might not have been Boykin. Yeah. It might have been I, the coach. No, absolutely. Just I, saying. I, I, again, I just I, – and the one, the one other thing I wanted to say about Danny Smith – was not just that reaction that the players gave him after Dean Lowry blocked him. Whenever Minka had his block taken away, who was out there barking at the official more than even Mike Ooh. Tomlin? It was Danny Smith. Danny Smith might have actually – I don't know how he didn't spit his gum onto the referee – with the, how <laughs> animated he was, because he he knew it's like that's not a leverage penalty, and so, but the fact that he was out there, nope. the players see that they feed off of that, and then later in the game they get another block anyway. I think that's one of the reasons why they all came together that way. That's it, and and don't don't forget too that when you have a special teams unit like this that creates this many plays. The other guys have to spend so much additional time prepping for you over the course of the week. And that's a big, big plus for the Steelers. When we come back, J1Q.
safety is a habit. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different. Help prevent gun accidents, misuse, and theft. Keep firearms safe and secure when not in use. For safe storage options, visit projectchildsafe.org. Time now for J1Q, and today's entry comes from Demond Brown. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, DK? Uh, this is Demond Brown out of Augusta, Georgia. Uh, just curious, uh, if Omar was to make the trade uh, for Cooper Cup and we gave away the second round pick, couldn't we just get that pick back, say, uh, in a draft, some kind of way, maybe trade back and some kind of way, get the second round pick, get the second round pick, we, tra we traded away for Cooper Cup back. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, when I look at draft picks, in general, I have a, a really vague sentiment to share on this that I don't know how many people will appreciate this. To me, the NFL draft and draft picks get crazy overvalued by a lot of fans. They're seen as just gold. And I think that's at least partly because the draft itself has become this monstrous event. Yes. Yes, they can get it back. If you really want to move up in a round, if there's somebody in the second round that you really, really want and you don't think they're going to be there in the third, maybe it's a positional need, maybe it's uh, a certain player that you can't believe fell a certain level and you don't think they're going to be around, yeah, you go and you give somebody, I don't know, third and a fourth or whatever it is, and you move up. It happens all the time, just like moving down does. Omar Khan himself says all the time, just like Kevin Colbert did before him, we can do these things. You know, we're happy to move up. We're happy to move down, depending on what it is that we see in that class. Let's say, for example, that it's you know, not necessarily a, a deep class, that it's one that's seen as being, I don't know, 20 or 25 deep. Even by the time you're at the end of the first round, you're not getting super excited about people. You're not moving up for them. And you can do this. The idea that the second round pick is too much. Oh, no, it's unfair. It's, uh, it, it's not a great exchange. That's not what matters in this moment. What matters in this moment is winning football games. I think, look, Cooper Cup comes with his flaws. I get that. He, he's hurt a lot. He's been hurt again this season. He's going to play tonight. He might get hurt again and make the whole conversation moot. But I think as I look at his skill set, especially coming out of the slot, although he can do other things, that he'd be of real use to this team. He might be the most prolific, not necessarily the best, but the one who's the most productive wide receiver on the roster. And you're giving up a second round pick that, like you said, you can get back. Cost you capital, but you can get it back.